boat. He loved his hats. I felt he needed a TU game day hat. Oh man. So that's you that you now have a TU game day hat. Well, I wasn't really quite, didn't know what to expect with uh, my teammates talking about me. I was a little scared. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm here and I'm thankful to be here. Um, I'd like to thank God for all his blessings and I'd like to congratulate all the other inductees in tonight's to TU's uh, Hall of Fame. I'm not a good speaker, so bear with me. Like most people, I've made decisions in my life that I'm not proud of. And if I had a chance to do them over, I would do it or not do it at all. But two of the best decisions I've made in my life is marry my wife, Kathy, of 44 years. <laughs> and coming to the University of Tulsa. Kathy blessed me with two wonderful sons, Dirk, a TU graduate, and Clint, who graduated from OU. They have been a blessing in my life and a pleasure. I'm extremely proud of both of them and their own accomplishments. I have two grandsons, Maddox, almost 10 years old, who is a soccer goalie and quite frankly has a pretty good leg himself. And I've got Owen, he's the one who's been squirming down there all night. He's four and a half and quite a pistol. Now you be bringing us a lot of joy. My parents, Elmer and Elzetta, two brothers, Ray and Rob, my sister Helen, have all passed. I wish they were here tonight. I know they'd be very proud. My sister Ruby, my brother Ronnie, TT, some nieces, nephews, some in-laws, my golf bubbas, my know-nothing Bible group, they're all here tonight. I love you all and thank you for being here to share in this moment with me. I've had a long history with the University of Tulsa. It started with my little brother Ronnie, TT. We would hike over to TU games on Saturday and we would sell Pepsi with some of our other childhood friends. It just seemed natural that I'd wind up going to school here. I feel because of the opportunity that you gave me that I've been able to meet some great people. I had a successful business, I was able to travel the world, and I was able to pro provide a good life for my wife, my sons, and myself. In the ninth grade, I busted my shoulder making a tackle on a kid named Sylvester Berry. You guys all our classmates, you, you'll remember Sylvester. He, he would wind up being our teammate. That injury would impact the rest of my athletic career. I had to have surgery. I had screws and pins put in my shoulder to put it back together. This actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise. The following year at Tulsa Central High School, because of the shoulder injury, the doctors wouldn't release me to play football. Our high school football coach had already seen me punt, and he convinced the doctor to let me kick as long as I didn't make any tackles. I wound up punting all three years for the varsity team and made special recognition of my my special recognition all state my senior year. After high school, I didn't have a lot of schools beating my door down to come to college for them. OU showed a little interest as far as a walk on. Wabash College in Indiana, they had some interest, but it was an all male college, so I had no interest in them. <laughs> There's Northeastern State and Central State. They were both interested, but basically from a financial aid standpoint. TU took a chance on this five foot, 10 and a half inch, 140 pound punter and offered me a one year partial scholarship covering books, tuition and fees. I was excited to accept it. The first day of freshman practice was on August 18th, 1972, my 18th birthday. The coaches had me stay in the Fortune Hall, the athletic dorm during two day practices, but it was understood that I would live at home afterwards. The first day of practice, there were at least 10 
punters, freshmen trying out for punter. Some of those were quarterbacks and running backs that had punted in high school. I knew I had my work cut out for me. Jeb Blunt, one of, our, one of my fellow freshmen and one of last year's Hall of Fame inductees, he was one of those quarterback punters. He likes to claim that on the first day of punting, that after my turn, I turned around and said to the rest of them, who's gonna be my backup? <laughs> now Jeb, I know I'm a little crazy. I wouldn't say that on the first day, maybe the second. After two days, the coaches informed me I was to live in the athletic dorm the rest of the year, granting me a scholarship for the rest, for, for my full scholarship for my freshman year. I wound up making the traveling squad and suiting up for all, all the games and taking my first ever plane trips. I never got on the field, but they did extend my scholarship for one more year. I was driven to win the varsity punting job my sophomore season. During the summer following my freshman year, Coach F.A. Dry, who had taken over the coaching job midway through the 1972 season, called me and had me come to his office. He said, Coach Jerry Rome had seen me practicing on my own at Skelly Stadium, kicking sometimes twice a day. And they had decided then to award me the punting job for my sophomore year. He concluded our meeting by saying, if you hit a bad punt in a game, don't bother coming back to our sideline. I can't imagine how many times or how many hours I spent in my college career kicking a football. I was always one, running around with eight to 10 footballs in my bag and an air pump and punted every chance that I got. I always felt like the more I punted, the more second nature it would become. I was a goal setter and I would always practice by mentally putting myself in a game situation or trying to kick a certain number of good punts or a certain number of coffin corner kicks in succession. If I reached a set goal, I would set a new one. I had never kicked soccer style, but I thought I, thought I could, and I taught myself how to kick soccer style in the off season between my junior and season, senior seasons. During fall practice, before my senior year, Coach Dry saw me kicking soccer style after practice with the place kickers. He comes walking up and he says, I want you to start working on that tomorrow. I said, Coach, I've been working on it since last season. I wound up winning the job of kicking off and attempting long range field goals as well as punting. I loved the opportunity to be, on, to be more involved in the games. Home games for me were special, but did have its drawbacks. Being from Tulsa, my family and friends, they occupi occupied about a third of the north end zone stands. I dreaded punting out of, the, out of that end of the field. My brothers would be yelling, Rick, you better get a good one. And if I didn't, they let me know or let me know. After my senior season, Coach Rome was hired as offensive coordinator for the, Se for the Seattle Seahawks. I'm sure his input is why I was drafted by them. A few of my favorite memories of the NFL are my first regular season punt when I was seven yards deep in my own end zone kicking against the St. Louis Cardinals, punting against the then Oakland Raiders with Ray Guy, the greatest punter of all time on the other sideline and running and passing the ball for first down out of pump formation. To be honest, my NFL career wasn't what I'd hoped it would be. But I had the opportunity to play with some of the greatest names in the game and future Hall of Famers. Terry Bradshaw, Rocky Blyer, Mean Joe Green, Harold Carmichael, Ron Jaworski, and of course our own Steve Largent were my teammates. I had the great fortune to play in three NFL seasons. A few years ago, I was blessed again when the NFL lowered the number of years to be vested for a pension to three years. I just barely qualified. That pension almost pays for my golf today. <laughs> I'm convinced that God has had his hands on everything in my life. He has let me make mistakes and at times I still do. He has put people in my life to support, push, encourage, and hold me accountable through athletics, my married life, and my walk with Christ. There always seems to be someone encouraging me in my faith. Today, there are 14 guys in our Know Nothing Bible Study group led by Joe Scruggs to keep me grounded. Some of them are here tonight. I'm proud to have been part of Tulsa University football. When I close my eyes, I can still see Jeb Blunt standing in the pocket, hitting Steve Largen with an impossible third and long first down pass and catch. I see running back Carlisle Cantrell breaking through an open hole 
and Arthur Bennett trotting out, on, out to kick a field goal with his shoeless right foot. For me to be inducted into the Tulsa University Athletic Hall of Fame with guys like Jerry Rome, Howard Twilley, Steve Largent, Steve August, uh, Jerry Ostrowski, Jeb Blunt, is just humbling. It is really humbling. Quite frankly, this award is not just about me. It's about and for my family, my friends, my coaches, teammates, and God. I could have done nothing if they weren't there to help me. I'd like to acknowledge a few people. Coach Dry, who has honored me more than he can imagine by being here tonight. I tried to convince him that I could play a position, do more than punt. He gave me the great advice to concentrate on punting, that kicking was my opportunity to, get to play after college. Coach Tom Ososki, who, who one day, he didn't think I was running fast, wind sprints fast enough, so he put me up in the stands to run stadium stairs. He forgot I was there. <laughs> About a quarter way through practice, one of the guys said, Coach, Ingles is still up in the stands, and he's like, oh, shoot. I'm not sure the word was shoot. <laughs> he said, you can come down now. Anyway, he would, go on, he would later teach, my sons, teach and coach my sons in high school. At TU, I made lifelong friends. My fellow booters, Arthur Bennett, my brother from another mother, Ewald Kempa, and Eddie Hare all pushed me to be better. Roy Crow, my deep snapper, who was absolutely amazing, his perfect snaps are in large part why I'm here tonight. Roy is here tonight, and I want you to know this honor is part yours, Roy. All of my punts started with you. Thank you, my friend. Kempa, Bennett, Blunt, Largent, Crow, Cantrell, August, Mark Wojciechowski, Neville Cable, Bill Dose, Bob Mogul, Nikki, Murphy Mitchell, Rad Girl, T.C. Blair, and our current athletic director, Rick Dixon, are just a few teammates I am blessed to have been, had in my life, and I still communicate with today. During our time at TU, we won three Missouri Valley Conference Championships, 1973, 74, and 75. Our 1975 senior class had eight guys chosen in the 1976 NFL Draft. We had more guys drafted that year than OU, OSU, and Arkansas all put together. From 1972 to 1977, there were 24 TU players drafted into the NFL. Ray Rhodes, another of tonight's inductees, is part of that era and one of those drafted. Steve August, from our freshman class, was a first round pick in 1977. In 1972, I'm sorry, in 1973, Drew Pearson signed as a free agent with the Dallas Cowboys, and he and our freshman teammate, Steve Largent, are members of the National Football League Hall of Fame. TU has beaten OU, OSU, Arkansas, Notre Dame, and many big name D1 programs. Not bad for the smallest school in NCAA Division I athletics. To end, I'd like to say, yes, TU can and has competed successfully at the D1 level. I am a proud graduate of Tulsa University and grateful for the opportunity you gave me. I am honored, humbled, and blessed to be inducted into the Tulsa University Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you.